And we're back, with some more oxygen not included. And last time we grabbed ourselves lots of ceramic, this time we've got to grab ourselves a whole bunch of fancy metals. Reason being is if you want to build an uh, you know, interplanetary empire, you've got to strip mine a few places and, you know, raid and plunder a whole bunch of resources. It's just how it's done, or I believe that's how it's done. Anyway, glimmering asteroid field. We are going to raid this as much as we can. Comes with wolframite and tungsten at like 80%. That's, that's a lot. Considering you get 20 tons per run and 80% of that is going to be wolframite and tungsten. Just, just to point out how useful this is, you can take that tungsten, or you can take the wolframite and turn it into tungsten, and then you can take that tungsten and combine it with a tiny little bit of niobium, and you get thermium. Now, before we go into how useful thermium is, if you don't have any niobium, you can turn ther thermium into niobium at a perfect ratio. So effectively, we're going to get 16 tons of tungsten, which we can turn into 16 tons of thermium. And the reason that's so useful is... You can make anything that requires metal with it. For example, uh, mesh tiles. Normally you can only make them out of ores or steel or thermium. Or you can say pneumatic doors can also be made out of thermium. Mechanical airlocks, same thing. Pretty much everything you can make out of raw materials, you can also make out of thermium. It means it doubles as just the perfect metal for everything. It's like steel, except better. So we're going to raid that... Uh, that field as much as we possibly can. Now there's this other one over here. This one is probably the second best one because it comes with 80% rust. We can take that rust and we can turn that into iron ore. We effectively burn it in these things, rusty oxidizers. They're actually pretty cheap to run. They're what, 60 watts? And they emit chlorine, blah, blah, blah. But they consume 750 grams of rust and emit 400 grams of iron ore. The iron ore we can refine to iron. The iron we can turn into steel. Uh, yeah, so it's a pretty good asteroid to hit up as often as we can as well. Plus, it's a... Uh, it's, Default size is 80 tons, which means it'll restock pretty quickly. And the third one of interest is this gilded asteroid field. This one comes with 25% gold, which is useful for a lot of things. Uh, fullerene for supercoolant, refined carbon, which we can use, regolith, which we can use, and sedimentary rock, which we can feed to our hatches. Pretty much everything here is useful, but the gold is what we're really interested in it for, and the refined carbon and regolith are just cherry on top. Now, those three should give us an awful lot of nice resources. However, considering the distance, all hydrogen rockets, but that's fine. Uh, then for the last one or two, I was thinking forested ore field gives us 10% aluminum ore and 70% igneous rock. That's actually quite useful for us. The other choice was this one, which gives us 10% cobalt, which, you know, equivalent to the aluminum ore. The problem being it gives us mud and polluted dirt, which we don't really have that much of a use for. We don't need that much polluted dirt and mud needs to be processed before we do anything with it. So I think I just prefer the igneous rock, feed that to hatches, turn it into coal, coal to refined carbon, refined carbon into diamond. Then finally, for the last rocket, I think it'd be uh, more of a round robin approach. This one has 5.6 tons, this one has 7.7, .7, and this one has 6.8. And all of them basically carry uranium ore. And that uranium ore we can refine down. We can also use the sulfur and the rust again. So one rocket, but we'd have to sort of manually go around and hit these up. But they can't hold 20 tons. There's only seven to six to seven tons in each one of them. So I'm thinking we hit those up in a sort of a, uh, a round robin approach once every so often. That means we need some more rockets. So, yeah, let's fuel this sucker up. We're going to need to extend on our fueling lines. That shouldn't be too hard because we've finally got enough ceramics that we can start doing that. Once we have the piping in place, it's just a simple case of deleting some bridges. Uh, this is why we designed the system this way. You just delete this bridge and then we can connect up these pipes. And it should start just, well, it should keep flowing on as normal, assuming we've done this correctly. Oh, here comes the first one now. Perfect. And done. Done. And Cancel. Excellent. Then we just do the same thing up here and we'll have extended our hydrogen lines without actually causing any horrible problems. In theory. In theory. Let's see. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. Hey, so I'm gonna... You know what? It doesn't even matter if they delete that now. Done. Deconstruct that. Finished. Now the hydrogen flows. All four of the rockets can be refueled. Well, until we put in a fifth, probably. We'll, we'll put in a fifth at some point. But for now, you know, it's eating through our ceramic supplies. We've only got 10 tons of the stuff left. And we spent all that time developing all the ceramic production, only to not have enough of it ever. You can never seem to have enough ceramic. All right, water applied, hydrogen applied, oxygen applied. This rocket should be good to go. But we do have to make a few changes. We're going to want to automate the unloading process. So for that... Down here we're going to have a liquid port unloader and then we're going to have to add in a solid port unloader. So this gas reservoir has got to go. Uh, how are we going? Yeah, I've already started production on that. One second. There we go. First off, we'll just drain out this tank and we're going to be left with just three gas reservoirs. But you know what? I can live with that. 
Actually, could we could press that down a little bit? There we go. A little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, but that'll store our gas for us. Oh, and I better put in an overflow on that. Uh, mm, yep, yeah, whatever. You can have a, a high pressure gas vent right there, and any excess hydrogen will get dumped into the background of space. We can't let this back up. This is. Uh, that hydrogen is coming from our oxygen production down there. And if we let that back up, we'll get hydrogen into the line and things would get really nasty. So let's not do that. Then we're just going to have, we have a liquid port unloader here and that's going to unload the liquid tungsten that comes back. And then we're going to limit it and flow control it to one kilo. It's going to flow all the way down here into our steam chamber and get dropped off. We had problems with that in the past. We are not going to have problems. Well, okay, we might have problems with that in the future, but I'd like to try and avoid them or take precautions that should hopefully help avoid it in the future. And what are you doing there? There, water reapplied. It's going to head up there and get sent across to feed all the toilets. I think that's rockets done for a little bit. But there is a few other projects, side projects, that need work on. Uh, oh, and printing pod activation. I think we've got a new recruit. We're going to need some more pilots, so I'm thinking machinery, rocketry, and building. And, okay, they're a shabby dresser with a small bladder, but, you know, nobody's perfect. Please welcome Pedro to the team. Wait, just, just Pedro? What happened to the weird, horribly hard to pronounce names? You people are going easy on me now. You got to stop doing that. I'll, I'll get used to it or something. Actually, Pedro, I think we're going to immediately skill you up in a little bit of rocketry, uh, lock you in a rocket, and then send you on a round trip. There goes Pedro now, locked inside a rocket for a very, very long time. They'll be fine though. We've given them a manual generator to train on. This is uh, this is a wonderful idea I stole from the comments. They just train on this while they're doing all the piloting. This is going to up their engineering their athletics and their piloting all at once, making them a much more productive member of the colony when we finally let them out of the rocket. Which, well, okay, assuming we let them out of the rocket at some point in the future. Now, if we check on the stair map, you'll see we've already got these three rockets running. We're going to have to find out a way to automate them so that they auto-launch, but uh, that hopefully shouldn't be too hard. Famous last words. Now we need one more thing we need to take care of. This down here was also pointed out in the comments. This is our super coolant loop. It's cooling down the... Our steam turbines down here, this nuclear power core is what's keeping our entire base running. However, there's a, a small inconvenience. I've put a little bridge on here. This bridge is to dump nuclear waste onto this in case this loop ever kind of went down to it. Sometimes nuclear waste would get caught inside the aqua tuner, it'd break, it was a problem. So we need to go in and delete that liquid bridge. Uh, the problem is, it's a little hot in there. It's like really, really hot, like 3000 rads. We, we really want them to stand there to deconstruct it. Currently, no one is allowed in there, but we're going to have to send someone in here to deconstruct that. Otherwise, eventually, we're going to end up with a little bit getting on. It will require oh, a few things to happen, but it can happen. So we need to get someone in there sooner rather than later. We need to find someone who has consumed some fish and is very resistant to radiation right about now. and Preferably has high construction. Millington here would appear to be our, our worker for this job. They have a construction skill of 16, and at the moment... We've consumed some fish. Where is it? They're radiation resistant because of fish, which is going to increase the radiation resistance substantially by plus 20%. Now all we got to do is uh, get them to the location they need to go to. Uh, yeah, easier said than done. We're going to get you down here, buddy. And then we're going to let you through to finish this off. But just for a split second, you're going to do this real, real quick. So I suppose the question is this. Did you have any plans for today? Because if you did, spend most of them... Okay, We'll see how many rads they're getting for this. Actually, that's not that bad. Current exposure, 193? How is that even possible? They're sitting in 1,300 rads! I suppose they've got the rad suit on and the medication is working. Everything. We've also we've given them rad pills, everything, so... Yep, yeah, yeah, just... Done. Perfect. Now get out of there. What are you doing? Don't, don't think about it. Just... Oh... Yeah, probably should have made that a two-way street for you, buddy. Sorry about that. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry, come on. It's only 1.7. I was really expecting you to get toasted. All the fish and everything really made that a lot easier. Okay, okay, then. In that case, we can, yep, check you out of that, and no one goes back in there again. I still wouldn't like them to let them wander in there without all of that precautions, but that actually was kind of anticlimactic. Never mind, problem there finished. Next up. Oh, yes, that was the next thing we wanted to do. Water. There is too much water in here. It's got up to 500 kilos. At some point, this is going to overpressurize the steam vent. It's still erupting right now, but we need to start siphoning off this water. I'm thinking we siphon off a few couple of kilos up here. Let's see these. Oh, God, that piping is a nightmare. We take this steam turbine here, and we take all of its output, and we run it down through here to cool it down and feed it into our bristle blossoms and everything else. It's just a case that this is going to come out at 95C. But if we pipe it through this, which is 
like always well below the 30c mark and send it into our base it should be fine so let me just do a whole bunch of more nasty piping i would i would like to apologize in advance for the stupidity here it's just uh things grow and you sort of just end up stuck with them so what's going to happen here is this steam turbine is going to activate and send down two kilos of water per second and that water is going to get sent through the steam room here in some insulated pipes and then when it gets out the other side it's still going to be insulated pipes until it gets to the top of our uh a sort of chill polluted water tank because that's got a lot of chill in it we have not been utilizing anyway it's going to come down in here and then it's going to sort of counter flow you see this is pumping some polluted water up here and around in a sort of a, a weird flow system just so that it can get sent up to these water tanks this is our overflow if there's too much polluted water in here it gets sent up that counter flow and now these two kilos of water that's coming hot in hot, which oh, actually should be coming in at 95C, is going to kind of flow in granite pipes. Now we're using granite because we don't want to dump too much heat off early on, but you see it's 95C there. And as it passes through those granite pipes, it's dumping it off a bunch. We're down to like 80 degrees there, uh, down to 77. We're finally down to, what are we got? 60 or so. And then it'll pass through these radiant pipes at the bottom. Dumps off a bunch of temperature. And by the time it goes up the other side, we're down to 19C. So now we've got two kilos of water and we want to merge it somehow with this polluted water. So all we do is this polluted water that we're filtering to run our entire base, literally all of our oxygen, our crops, everything is running off this one liquid pump right here. All of that is getting filtered there and sent out to everywhere it needs to go. And this is the main output line. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide these two kilos of water on right here. And because they're coming in on the green thing, they take priority, meaning this will slow down to let them through, meaning this will always constantly keep flowing, meaning two kilos of our water demand is now handled entirely by that steam turbine. So we're recycling two kilos of water out of this entire steam room to fuel our base, which should reduce the pressure in here slowly. Well, maybe it depends. How much water did we get out of this per second, actually? Going ahead and installing a little mod, we've got the calculated average output down here. This is just one of those mods that I really feel should be baked in. Anytime you analyze a vent or geyser, it'll give you the calculated average output per second. So this tells us we'll get 2.29 kilos per second of water out of this. However, it is salt water. And salt water, when you boil it, you lose some of the mass because some of it turns into uh, salt. So this actually works at about 2.12 kilos. So what we're going to do here is limit it to 2.3, and then we're going to add in a little bit of extra water. I mean, why not? Uh, we can add that second turbine in there, and then we'll just stick in a little bit of automation with a pressure sensor. Actually, never mind. I realized the pressure sensor only goes up to 20 kilos. I was hoping to keep that to about, ooh, 300 kilos, but instead we can just set that to 2.150. That should be close enough that it will take a very, very long time to drain that much steam. When you imagine the size of the steam pool, that should give us many, many thousands of cycles of stable steam pressure. Now, checking here. Yeah, we're getting out 2.15 kilos. Excellent. That goes all the way through. It comes out the other side at 21C. I think that's working excellently. And the thing is, that's going to give us more polluted water to go into our oxygen production, well, our clay production, so that we can get ourselves even more ceramics. Excellent. One other thing that needs automation to, well, before we can leave this planet and forget about it, is eggs from up here. The, these keep dropping eggs occasionally down to this section, so we're going to stick in a bit of an auto sweeper. It'll collect any eggs that fall off this and dump them right back on top. This is our wild critter farm that we keep, you know, some reserves just in case we ever want to retame something like having some wild dreckos about the place, some sweet larvae, that type of thing. In fact, hmm, that's, I think we might want to get a sage hatch or two over there if we can find an egg for them, though. Yeah, finding the eggs for them is a problem. You know what? Not going to worry about it. We'll move over the eggs at a later point. But this if we set this to all eggs, should automate that procedure perfectly. All right, oh, over here I've got these uh, canister emptiers. They're for releasing oxygen. Every so often they, a suit dies, and when it does, it leaves behind however much oxygen was in it, and then we dump off the oxygen there. It's just close enough to our base that, ooh, the air pressure in there is quite low. Hmm. Yeah, might want to do something about that. One moment. There we go. We'll just extend on this bottom line. This bottom line has not been utilized as much, and we'll just have all that excess oxygen go up there and pressurize that area. I don't like how low pressure that was. Oh, that'll sort itself out over the next while. Now, we did have a rocket return, and it's the tungsten one. Now, we had horrible problems with this time, this one last time. We just dumped out the tungsten on the ground, and we started trying to use bottle emptiers. No. Nope, 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 nope. Instead, this time, this time we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to set that to tungsten. And the way this works is as follows. Well, it should work. These rocket silos, they're all connected together. And at the end, they're connected to this liquid rocket port unloader, which means all of them can access it. And this is set to unload 
liquid tungsten. And that liquid tungsten is going to come down here in these ceramic pipes. And then when it gets down to here, it's going to get filtered into one kilo packets. The reason for one kilo packets is they can't break in the pipe. T anything over a kilo, and if it changes state, as in goes so cold it actually turns solid, it would break the pipe. But if it's at one kilo, you could chill this down to minus 1,000 and it won't care. Okay, you won't get that. To, there's no such thing as minus 1,000 Kelvin, but whatever. Now it comes through here, and it's going to get cooled down by these radiant pipes. Pops out in this section, and boom. Tungsten coming out one kilo at a time. No loss of... Actually, was there a loss of mass? No, seems to be perfect. Excellent. Now, of course, that's going to be a bit slow. We're unloading it at, you know, one kilo per second, and it comes with, I think it's 3,600 kilos. How much? How many kilos do we have? Okay, so we had about four tons of this stuff. This might take a little time, just a little bit of time, but it'll be fine. And then out of here, we can take all the wolframite and coal. In fact, what's the temperature down here? Ooh, that coal might flash if we're not careful. Actually, it's two tons. It's two tons of coal, it'll be fine. And plus I realized this is uh, only one kilo of refined carbon. So no matter how hot it is, it's got very little temperature. It can dump into anything. What the? That's three t kilos of refined carbon. Never mind, never mind. All right, we'll take, put all of those away and then we're gonna have to figure out how to get this rocket to launch back and, oops. Wanted to delete those ladder segments, not the actual spacefarer module. All right, and we might want to get a new crew member in here. This has actually got Zap in it, and Zap is one of our best crew members because they've got amazing science, and basically they're really skilled at an awful lot of stuff. So we need to find someone less skilled to go in there. We are still unloading that liquid cargo tank. We're down to about 842 seconds before that will be finished. So, you know, a little bit over a cycle. It's great the way you can you can calculate exactly that. This actually works out really nicely for us, but that's not the thing. Uh, over here, we've got this rocket has come back, and it's carrying a whole bunch of rust and carbon dioxide. And all we're going to do is set this solid rocket port on loader to all. And there we go. Now all of that stuff is going to get shunted over here and get dropped off on that tile. That's it. This should unload 20 kilos per second at a time and any rockets that come back should unload automatically. Well, now we've got to figure out the automation on these. I think I've got them figured out, but we're going to leave these like they are. For example, this one here says... Uh, Sends a green signal when the rocket is ready for flight. This one is basically the launch signal. You send a green signal in there, the rocket should launch. And this one sends a green signal when there's a rocket on the pad. So realistically, once that liquid tank is empty and we get a crewman on board, it should be ready to fly. In fact, we've changed the crewman over, but, mm, but we'll just give me a minute until the uh, all the liquid is just about empty. What I am most interested to see here is what happens when we run out of cargo, as in when we have unloaded all the liquid from this tank, does that turn green? Because this should send a green signal when the rocket is ready to launch. However, I don't know if that includes the actual pawn being on board. Because if the pawn has to be on board as well, that's going to make things just a little bit more complicated. But let's just see here. We should be just coming up on it. Oh, come on. There's two kilos. Just, just spit it out. Come on. You got this. Two more kilos. And there we go. It's all done. And no, it's not done. I think the problem is it needs the, yeah, it needs the pilot on board and all crew boarded. Hmm, so how do we automate that? All right, we have an idea. What I've done here is left it so that the crew can go on board the ship, even when it's landed. They don't have to, but they've got the options. And I've assigned it out so that only they can use this wash basin, just to stop other people using it, and only they can use the mess table and bed. So theoretically, they should always come back here at night, and this is just about to empty out of cargo. And when it does, assuming there's the pawn is on board, then it should automatically just go to green. Well, assuming this happens before they wake up and run out of the ship. Never mind, they got out and left. God damn it. Okay, but theoretically they can come back at any point. All right, tugboat is coming back. They're going to get onto their rocket. And when they do, that should turn green. If it does, yes. All right then, that we can work with. That means if the thing is, is fueled, all the cargo is off it, and the pawn is on board, that turns green, that gives us a launch signal. That should work. In fact, we wouldn't even have to do anything too complicated. We could just, uh, oh, famous last words, right? We could just do that. So the moment that turns green, it launches the rocket. Uh, yeah, that should in theory work. We don't even need to know that the rocket's landed. Um, this would be an extremely dumb way of doing it, but I'm, I'm not above doing it a dumb way, so long as it works. Especially considering these things are so far away, like this uh, glimmering asteroid field. It takes a long time to regenerate, so it's not like it matters if we're a little bit slow about getting around there. It's going to end up at the point where we're going to be harvesting more than it ever has. So, 
if we're a little bit slower, that's not really the worst thing in the world. Worst thing we could do, or another thing we could do is we could introduce some sort of delay mechanism to slow down how long it takes between launches if we really want, but yeah, I'm not really that bothered. And that thing, yeah, I think we're just about to launch. And I think, yep, there we go. Oh, beautiful. All right, so we have the dumbest of dumbest automations. That's fine. That means whenever that crew member gets back on board, they'll be ready to fire off as well. And that's, uh, that's rockets automated. Well, at least the loading and unloading of them. Hmm. Now I just have to figure out how to automate this one without hooking it up to one of those uh, solid port unloaders. Actually, we might just hook it up to a port unloader. All the cargo over here is going to be solid. We can just squish that one over to the right and be done with it. So we scooched the rad rocket over one tile, and now there's a, a location for that to land on. Then we've got this solid rocket port unloader. All that's going to do is unload all of the resources that come out of it and drop it over there. So, yeah, it's in a vacuum and on an insulated tile, so there should be no problems. And, oh, there was one other thing I did. Over here, well, we were having low oxygen pressure over this section. So I thought, if this was like 600 grams or something like that, why not just dump a, a whole bunch of oxygen? And we were dumping oxygen into space from this little setup. So all we did was grabbed all that oxygen, or some of it anyway, and just started piping it over here. And normally these uh, gas vents shut off at 2kgs, or the regular gas vents shut off at 2kgs, but we put in a high pressure one and an atmos sensor and set it to 2.5kgs. That way we get a little bit of extra oxygen pressure to help pressurize the area, and that made sure that this whole place is pressurized. In fact, we even shunted a bit of it up to the top as well to make sure that this place stayed pressurized. This is for people going into space. That has resulted in... Well, we've got a lot more full oxygen lines going to our suits, and we've got a lot more oxygen going into our oxidizers to, or, yeah, oxidite refineries to make more oxidite for our rockets. So that has sorted a whole bunch of problems for us. And finally, yeah, new recruit, I'm thinking. Construction, excavation, and strength? They've got Staryite, which I've never used, plus 10 morale in outer space, so they'll love their training, and critter aversion, which, well, we don't care, we've got three ranchers already. Please welcome MacLufus to the team. Said normal, regular MacLufus name. All right, let's get you a rocket. Actually, it's going to be a while before we get your rocket up and running. You can just, well, you can treadmill. We only need one more rocket before I think we've got everything we want harvested. And I think that rocket location would be, yeah, the one that's going to be flying around to the radioactive asteroid field. So it's going to need to be a hydrogen one. That will require us to extend these lines. And you know what? Nope, nope. There's a bunch of other stuff I want to get done first. Namely, we want to send two rockets for full-on, well, not full-on colonization, but... Uh, some destructive purposes. Caldera here has, well, just a lot of iron going on, and I would like to come along here and quickly tame all these iron volcanoes, or at the very least get them producing at maximum speed. I mean, this one here has, what, there's 26 tons of iron there, there's probably another 26 tons over there. There's about 100 tons of iron here we can take back to make steel. I'd like to come here, put in some permanent volcano refineries, and then just leave, or volcano tamers, and then just leave with uh, all the resources they've got. But I'd like to use a two-person team, or a six-person team. So we've got one rocket here configured and a second one which is identically configured. Now we just need a team of six to go do the jobs. For coming back here, we did leave this bunker door so we had somewhere to land our ship. However, there's actually three tiles of space here we can land on. So that means we can quickly and efficiently core this place out so that we can land our rocket. Now one thing I did minor... Actually, can we land through this trailblazer? If we could land through the trailblazer, I want to try it. But uh yeah, this was so far away we needed hydrogen rockets to get here, so unfortunately I kind of couldn't bring both teams. I could only bring one. Oh god. Okay, get rid of that last one, and then can we land the rocket? Yes, we can. Uh, where are you going? You are picking up granite to repair stuff. No. We're going to get you out of the rocket exhaust so you don't scald yourself. In fact, we're going to get you down. We'll keep them down there out of the way while we land the rocket. And while that's landing, we're going to need a whole bunch of granite. We're going to want to make some insulated tiles here. And, oh god, I think I stripped mine out a bunch of the granite while I was here last time because, well, I wanted to bring it home with us. We were running short on minerals back home too. But yeah, we can grab some more while we're here. Oh, here they come. And they went straight through the trailblazer lander and nothing? All right, good to know. And we also burnt out the whole bottom. <laughs> Never mind. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, we can bring you down a couple of rows. Or maybe we shouldn't. Now the thing about it, let's maybe let the steam dissipate before we let them out. Learning from my mistakes, slowly but surely. A little bit of reconstruction and rebuilding and we can get some more solar panels back up. That should 
hopefully take the stress off of our team. We've only got three duplicates and we have a lot of work to do. Though I still have to put in a, a little running wheel in here so they have some way of generating more power. Our solar panels here are not going to be very productive. This planet is not exactly uh, very lux friendly. Since we are working with a greatly reduced crew, I'm thinking we're going to do this dumb style. We're just going to pour the molten metal down here and let it all collect at the bottom of the map. It'll eventually melt everything, but that'll take a long time. And we don't care. So, give me a few minutes here and I think we can make ourselves a very, very dumb metal taming system. While all of this is going on, we have got some new printables. Where is it? Yes, here we are. And with them, we've got an interesting one. Camilla here has digging, building, and operating. Now, there's stereoid, caregiver, but they have a bit of Luddite. Minus three machinery, but honestly, that's not even that bad. They'd make an excellent mechatronics engineer, even with that minus three, and the building and digging to go with it? Yes, please welcome to the team, Sinatra. Uh, yeah, we better ooh, stick you on the wheel and maybe find you a rocket to uh, fly around in. Okay, that's 28 dupes. I need to stop hiring for a while, at least until we get the sour gas boiler from running. Uh, where are we back on Cal Caldera? Caldera? Whatever, Calderon. Uh, yes, we're just gonna finish this section off, it should be really quick. Well, this plan is really, really dumb. What we've done here is we've put insulated tiles along the bottom and the back end of it. That way, the heat can't, well, the, the heat won't cause the iron to change immediately. But we have left granite tiles on top, and they're not great at withstanding heat. However, they're okay at transferring heat a little bit, which means this sort of scoop on the top should collect water. The water should keep this area cool and should stop the top of it from melting off and help spread that heat out. So that I'm kind of hoping all this ice will start to melt, fall down on here, land on top of this, and then it will evaporate to help cool down the iron. And any iron that's in here should eventually pour over the edge and down to the bottom where all the water will eventually go. So we're basically going to turn this entire place into a giant steam sauna of a sort. Now, for now, we're just going to take what they've got. There's 161 tons of iron here. We're going to bring all of that home. That's that's going to turn into a lot of steel. Um, about 200 tons of it. We're going to need to go get our hands on some uh, lime, though, aren't we? No, that we can that we can sort out. That's not a big deal. Just uh, let me finish off scooping this area out here. Like, what I have to do is make sure there's no dirt or polluted water around these vents. Otherwise, it causes uh, dirt tiles to form. It's just the uh, polluted water boils off, you're left with some dirt, and then that dirt gets turned into, well, sand. And then that sand forms a tile, and until this sand either gets melted into glass, you end up with it potentially gumming up the volcano. So you're going to clear this area out, so that all of them are sort of like this one or this one, and that should be the end of it. We can leave this place and come back when it's a roiling inferno of steam. Need to be a bit careful here. It turns out there's lead tiles in here, and those lead tiles melted because of, well... Yeah, that stuff's pretty hot. The iron melted the lead, so we couldn't actually get out of here. I think we've got some hungry duplicates right about now. Uh, that'll be fine. We'll place this entire area here with iron. We have uh, a lot of it right now. Only 95 tons, but I think some of it's misplaced. There was 160 there a minute ago. One minor problem with trying to bring all this iron back. It's, uh, it's a little hot. It's turned the entire top of this map into a blazing inferno. It's like 200 degrees in here, it's melting all the ice slowly but surely. Oh, we're actually losing gas into space. You know what, let's, uh, let's wall that in a bit. I think we're going to be walling this in using iron, just because it's more conductive. And it'll help, uh, it'll help melt all of that nasty, nasty ice. So, yeah, we just uh, used a whole bunch of that iron to wall in the top of the map to prevent all the steam from escaping. Because, yes, there's literally steam getting formed in here because of the temperature. Also, that used to all be slime. It's now dirt, because... We may have accidentally heated it up so much it turned into dirt. That's a lot of heat. I think I'm going to make a couple of minor changes here before we go home. I'm actually making a whole bunch of temp shift plates out of iron to try and turn all that iron into something that will suck the heat out of it. But I think I've got an idea how we could speed this along just a little bit. So we just moved all the iron over to this section. And I'm just going to, well, heat this whole place up until all the ice melts in this section. I think we can turn this entire planet into just a giant steam room. It might take a little bit of time, but eh. Oh, down here, yeah, the iron is slowly melting off the edge, and what is that? How much iron is there? That's nine tons. You know what? I don't even care about those nine tons. As you can see, some of it is actually hanging around a little bit of a long time, but I think the system should work, and it should hopefully start melting everything. Uh, I did have to put some stuff over here, namely because it turns out some of the steel and copper and all that we left lying around got a little bit overheated by hanging around with the iron. Those two are a bad influence on each other. We have managed to turn all the iron into temperature shift plates, dumped all of its temperature into the surrounding area, and, well, okay, we melted a whole bunch of stuff, but whatever. It's just a, a minor planet. We'll worry about nothing. Uh, 
Now, we'll get rid of all of those, and then we'll just start deconstructing everything. Then we can load it back up in the ship and get out of here. After we're finished with this place, it's not even that bad. The cold has swept back in and reclaimed everything but the top half, and I'm sure it'll get that for a while. Well, at least until the volcanoes uh, spew enough hot iron into this place. There's still a bunch left. There's eight tons, but I am not bothered carrying it. If we check out the interior here, we have... 154 tons of iron on board. It's actually pretty chilly as well. It's it's cooling down this area. We've dumped it all on this tile. We removed the two fridges. I think it's time to get out of here, especially considering we only have three Atmos suits left. We burned through a lot of Atmos suits working on this planet. But it's fine. It's fine. This was a, a little bit of an annoyance that we could only bring one crew, but this is going to sort us for steel for... Oh, until we ever... It will be a while before we need any more steel. That was excellent work by that team. I really wish that we had two. For the next mission, we're going to need to bring at least two teams. Uh, get out of here. Our star map is looking a little uh, confusing. We have a lot of ships going everywhere. Though I have made one change, whereas that I kept that rocket around. I've come up with a new rocket design. This one is Pedro's rocket. And what we've done here is we've locked this door so that Pedro can't get out. Pedro is literally locked inside the rocket. This makes things much simpler because Pedro can't get out. Everyone else can get in and out so they can come in and restock the fridge and they can use his toilet and, you know, stock back up the oxidizer. And we've also changed this door so that only Pedro is allowed in. So Pedro can work the manual generator. No one else can get in. So when this lands, he's stuck inside the rocket, just stays here, does his thing. And then he has to stay here until the rocket is fueled and all the, the resources are off it. All the other duplicates can run in and out and restock their fridges and stuff. Now, you would have to make sure that your duplicates, you know, are going to get in there in time. And then... Actually, let's hook this up now. I left this unhooked so that you could see. And then, now that the moment these guys get out, this should automatically launch. Or will it? Seriously? Come on. Why are you not launching? Oh, sorry. There's some gold left on board. All right, once the gold is finished and those two... Did you go in to use his toilet? Seriously, guys, just stop going in and messing with his toilet. That's just mean. The guy's got to spend like a whole bunch of time on that ship for the next ages. Come on, are you launching? There we go. So as long as I stick with that design on all the rockets, I can make sure all the rockets are automated and make sure we've trapped all the duplicates inside. Uh, not maybe the nicest thing, but it's very efficient at making sure you get your cargo delivered. One unintended side effect of some of our modifications earlier is we accidentally stifled our bristle blossoms. Turns out uh, these steam turbines down here were spitting out a whole bunch of water. The water was going through here and actually heated this up above the 30 degree mark. And once the 30 degree water started getting into our system, well, we were in trouble. So, we stuck in some automation now. This detects if the water in here goes above 28 degrees. If it does go above 28 degrees, it sends an automation signal to stop those steam turbines dumping hot water into our tank. Uh, we'll, we'll see how well it works out, but I've made some changes now, and these should start unstifling shortly. The boys have returned victorious. Excellent. I want all of that iron right into our, uh, into our forge. We need to start making steel out of that. Right now, we're up to 80 tons of thermium, 73 tons of steel, and 87 tons of ceramic. That's all the important stuff for the sour gas boiler. However... There is one other thing we need to take care of before we can go to Bloom Oil. See, the thing about Bloom Oil is uh, you need to feed all of those oil reservoirs. You put in a kilo of water, you get out 3.33 kilos of crude. We need a lot of water. This planet doesn't really come with a lot of water. If we check out Bloom Oil here, you'll notice it's got a coasty vent. That's it. That's not going to be nearly enough water. Not the five kilos a second we're going to need. However, there is a planet that would have sufficient water supplies for our needs, at least for a while. Also, it's got a water geyser and a salt water geyser there. So I'm thinking we come back here, we set up some liquid pumps, we have to figure out how many rads we need to bring with us, and then we start firing five kilos of water per second over at Blumwell. That will take a little bit of math, though, and I'm going to have to figure out how much nuclear waste we're going to need. There'll be some playing around in the background. But I think we're going to cut this out for today. I think we've been very, very successful. Acquiring that much iron, mmm, beautiful. Also, I think our base is now completely self-sustained. We don't really have to care too much about it. We're, we're finding the minor, odd minor kink, like when the, the crops got stifled a bit, but I think we're good to go. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here for the day. I hope you enjoy your weekend and good luck.